Hey, in today's lesson, I'm going to give you the solution you need to finally speak English like a native English speaker. No more frustration, no more feeling discouraged. You will finally be able to sound just like me. Now, if you want to continue studying with me, even after this lesson, don't forget, all you have to do is go to www.englishfluencyplan.com. Follow the plan and you will speak English like me. I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right. So let me break down your real struggle. You see the struggle you are experiencing right now is even though you have been studying English for years, you are still not able to speak English fluently. In other words, you still don't speak English like a native English speaker. This is why you are frustrated. Why am I studying so much? And yet I'm still not able to sound like teacher Tiffany. Let me break it down some more for you because so many students just like you have the same issue. For example, you passed an English exam, but you still get stuck when you try to express yourself in certain situations. I've had so many students over the years that had this exact same issue. One of my students in South Korea, great guy. He passed the exams. However, he still did not sound like a native English speaker. And maybe this is your situation right now. Or what about this situation? You can understand when English speakers speak, you understand what we say, but when you try to express yourself, it does not come out the same way. You know, the classic, my mind went blank. You feel like everything is gone. Even though when you watch television dramas or watch my English lessons, you understand it is very frustrating when you try to speak in English and it doesn't come out the same way. This is something you are experiencing right now. What about this one? You keep studying advanced English books, but they don't seem to be helping you speak English better. You're doing all that you can do, but you still don't feel like you are moving forward. You don't feel like your English is improving. Listen, I understand what you are experiencing. I experienced the same thing when I was studying Korean. I hit this point and I could not go above. I couldn't improve until I found this solution. Here's the solution that will help you finally speak English like a native English speaker. The solution to your English fluency issue is to learn how to organize your thoughts like a native English speaker. In other words, you have to learn the thought organization techniques that native English speakers learn. Now I'm sure you've heard this expression many times. Think in English, think like a native English speaker but you need to know the techniques that we native English speakers actually use to think in English. So let me break this down for you. Point number one is this native English speakers spend years. You heard me right years practicing the technique of thought organization. We work on expressing details, giving examples, and also connecting our personal experiences to the topics we are discussing. Notice I said three specific things, details, examples, and personal experiences. Listen, my friend, I am literally giving you the key that will help you unlock the door to finally helping you walk through it and speaking English like a native English speaker. I want to tell you this story. My niece, she is five years old. But my mom, her grandmother used to keep her during the week. So my sister and brother-in-law could work. And every day she was about one or two years old. Every morning during the week, she would walk upstairs to my office when I stayed with my family and she would come in my office and I would ask her a series of questions. I'd say, Hey, how are you today? And she'd tell me, remember she was only one or two years old. I'd say, Oh, okay. Did you enjoy hanging out with Gammy? She calls my mom Gammy. And she'd say, yes. Then I would say, why I wanted her to give me details. Then I would ask her, Hey, tell me, what did you do? Give me examples. 
And then I'd ask her, hey, tell me some more information. I wanted her to give me her personal experience. Remember, my niece was two years old or one year old at the time, and I was asking her to give me details, examples, and personal experiences. This is what we have been doing our entire lives as native English speakers, practicing thought organization. But these are the three main skills that we actually kind of perfect over time. And you can learn this technique to sound like us. Another thing I want to say to break down this idea for you that will help you is this one right here. When you get to the intermediate or advanced English level, you have to, you need to, you must change the way that you study. Basically at this point where you are right now, you need to start mastering the thought organization technique. I love revealing this to my students because you like my students, are intelligent. You are amazing. Don't forget that you are learning another language, right? English is not your first language. So you have all of this information stored within your mind. You've been learning words, expressions, idioms, watching television dramas, watching my English lessons and other teachers online. So you have a lot of information stored in your brain. So when you get to the intermediate advanced level, now it's time to organize what's already in your brain. Well, books can't teach you this technique. You have to do it in the same way that native English speakers actually apply the technique. The other thing I need you to understand is in order to master the thought organization technique, you need to organize and access the information that you have been putting into your brain. Like I just explained, organizing your thoughts, this technique is more important than inputting more information. Listen to me. I'm going to say it one more time. Organizing your thoughts is more important than inputting more information. That's right. The technique that I'm showing you that I'm going to explain to you, it's more important for you to master this technique than to get another book and to memorize another word. You need to organize your thoughts. Now, let me explain this to you again. The solution that will help you is right here. I'm going to give you a real life example. You can master the thought organization technique by watching and listening to others apply it in real life. You heard me right. All you have to do is watch others apply the technique in real life. In other words, the more you observe natural English conversations between native English speakers and they are applying the thought organization technique, the easier it will be for you to apply it as well. Once again, I'll say it again. In other words, the more you observe native English speakers, notice I said, observe. That means instead of the book, you need to watch a conversation between native English speakers. So let me break this down for you. Once again, here we go. Thought organization during a real English conversation, native English speakers like me give details, examples and personal experiences that help the listener understand their point of view. So here's the breakdown again, to help you understand how this happens. I want to break down a simple conversation I had with another English teacher. Now this is teacher Carly. She is amazing. The conversation started off. I said, I love it. All right. So I'll get started. The first question I want to ask you is, what is fashionable in your city nowadays? Like, do you like the current fashion? And if so, why, if not, why not? Like, so what's the kind of the current, you know, when I'm saying the trendy fashion statement right now, now, what will you notice? I literally just wrote verbatim exactly what I was saying. It was a natural English conversation, right? So you heard me ask the question and then I started saying other words. So follow along. I asked the question, watch how teacher Carly responded. We're going to look at the transcript and then you're going to listen to the conversation and watch the conversation. This is what she said. So right now I'm currently in like Northwest Atlanta 
and I'm in like a little suburban area. In other words, she was giving details. She started giving details immediately in order to answer my question. She started giving details. Then she continued. She said, so a lot of times you just see sweatpants, leggings, and like athletic wear. It's called athleisure. She gave examples. Then I responded and said, yes, because I agreed with her. Carly continued and gave a personal experience. She said, you see that a lot. And when I first moved here, I was like, ew, never. How dare they wear athletic clothes when they are not going to the gym. But you know, ever since COVID started and I basically, I, I work from home and I don't really do much. I have turned into one of those people that wear athletic clothes. Even when I'm not going to the gym, I have adapted to all the other moms in my area and I wear sweatpants or leggings or hoodies and different, like different workout shirts just to go to the store. And people look at me like, Oh, she must have just worked out good for her. And I'm like, I just spent seven hours on Netflix. And then I came here to get some groceries wearing these clothes. You know, that was a short part of a conversation that I had with Carly, but you see what happened again thought organization for native English speakers, details, examples, and personal experiences. These three, three things are integral and important part of speaking English like a native. Now I want to play the clip. We just read through the transcript. Now that you understand how native English speakers speak and when we respond to a question or are speaking about a topic, how we go from details to examples and a personal experience, you are going to able to under, <laughs> you are going to be able to understand. I'm going to leave this in here so you guys can realize sometimes <laughs> even when we're speaking, we get tongue twisted or tongue tied. So we're going to watch the clip real quick and see what Carly said. We just read through it. Here we go. Check out the conversation, a short part of the conversation I had with Carly. I love it. All right. So I'll get started. The first question I want to ask you is what is fashionable in your city nowadays? Um, like, do you like the current fashion? And if so, why, if not, why not? Like, so what's the kind of the current, you know what I'm saying? The trendy fashion statement okay. right now. So right now I'm currently in like Northwest Atlanta and I'm in like a little suburban area. So a lot of times you just see sweatpants, leggings, and like athletic wear it's called athleisure. Yes. Um, you see that a lot. And when I first moved here, I was like, ew, never. How dare they wear athletic clothes when they're not going to the gym. But you know, ever since COVID started and I basically, mm -hmm. I work from home and I don't really do much. Exactly. I have turned into one of those people that wear athletic clothes, even when I'm not going to the gym. Yes. I, I have adapted to all the other moms in this area and I wear sweatpants or leggings or hoodies and different, like yes. different <laughs> workout shirts just to go to the store. And people look at me like, Oh, she must've just worked out good for her. And I'm like, I just spent seven hours on Netflix. <laughs> and then I came here to get me some groceries <laughs> wearing these clothes. You know. Okay. So you see how we had the conversation, a very short part of our conversation talking about what's fashionable, right? But again, she gave details, examples, and then a personal experience. So if you want to sound like a native English speaker, all you have to do is observe native English speakers having conversations about real topics and then pay attention to how we organize our thoughts, details, examples, personal experiences. And as you observe, you will start being able to speak just like we're speaking. It's not just the words and expressions. It's how you organize your thoughts. Now, again, this is just a small piece of what I teach my students in my speak English like a native membership. Now, if you want to join our family, this conversation actually came from a lesson that I taught my students. So this is actually step three 
of a five-step method I use to teach my students how to speak English like a native. We just went over step three, analyzing the conversation. So if you want to join our family, remember, just go to www.englishfluencyplan.com and finally start speaking English like a native. Don't be stressed anymore. We look forward to seeing you and I'll talk to you in the next lesson. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. So today's story is actually about one of my students. I was coaching him and helping him with his English. And I want to tell you something that happened to him and how happy it made me feel. So I met this student about a month and a half ago, a month and a half ago, um, he actually became my student. And I remember the very first class, right? We, we hopped onto a Zoom uh, call and um, I was explaining to him what I was going to teach him. And I said, listen to me, I am going to teach you a method that will help you speak English more fluently. It will transform your English in less than a month. And I remember seeing the look on his face like, okay. <laughs> you know, when someone says something and you're like, uh, that's not possible. You see this student, he had been studying English for years. And for me to tell him, Hey, in about a month or a little less than a month, I'm going to help you speak English better than you've ever spoken before using a simple method. He liked me, but he really wasn't on board just yet. I said, okay, don't worry. So we proceeded to study together. We met twice a week and about the fourth class, I saw something happen to him. You see the very first class, let me show you the very first class we met. I could tell he was a little bit nervous. He wasn't able to speak with as much confidence as he wanted to. When I asked him questions during our first class, but when we got to the fourth class, I had taught him the method and now we were putting it into practice. I remember him jumping into our zoom class and I said, Hey, how are you? His shoulders were back and he was speaking with so much confidence. I was honestly in shock. He said, Hey, Tiffany, I'm doing really well. Thank you. I said, well, I'm glad to hear that. And I asked him just to let me know what he had learned so far and how he felt about our classes. And this man who in the first class seemed so nervous, started to speak to me and he spoke for 20 minutes. You heard me right. 20 minutes with confidence telling me that, Hey Tiff, before I met you before our first class, I was uncomfortable speaking in meetings in English. I, I wasn't confident in, in what I was saying and I didn't really feel good about myself. Listen, this man is a genius, but yet because of English, he would start to feel frustrated and discouraged and not confident. But in that fourth class, I saw a transformation. And why am I telling you this? Because as I watched him, my heart was touched because my whole goal is to help him and English learners, just like you speak English with confidence. I can give you the tools. I can give you the tips and the techniques, but once you start putting them into practice and you watch yourself transform, and then I'm able to see it. -wee! I get excited and it makes me want to help more. So I listened to him talk for about 20 minutes. He didn't even realize he was talking for that long. And he said, Tiff, I just want to say that I just feel better about myself. I'm just feeling more confident. I'm realizing that I, I am a good English speaker. And I said, you are, I said, you are, you're applying what you're learning and I'm proud of you. And we had more classes after that. But I'll never forget that moment because it was like watching someone experience something they've never experienced before. And if you've never watched someone gain confidence in themselves, start smiling, fix their posture, stand tall, or even sit tall, you will never understand how that feels until you've watched somebody transform. Maybe you have a child and you've watched your child transform or your spouse. It's an amazing feeling. So that student, and I know he knows I'm talking about him if he's watching right now, I had to thank him for blessing me 
to see him change, I'm so proud of him. And I was proud of him in that moment. So again, hopefully you enjoyed this short story. Again, I am so honored to be your teacher and I love helping you speak English with confidence. So I will see you in the next lesson. Don't forget, if you want to keep studying with me and start speaking like a native, don't worry. Just hit the link in the description, www.englishfluencyplan.com, and I'll talk to you next time.